Welcome to the Appliance Educator Podcast, presented by Z-Line Kitchen and Bath, attainable luxury designed in Lake Tahoe. Today we're talking to Grunk and Grime, the Appliance Brothers, the educators themselves, Nick and Matt. Welcome everybody to a really fun episode of the Appliance Educator Podcast today. I am joined by the two men, the myths, the legends themselves, the Grunk and the Grime, the Appliance Educators. I want to welcome Matt. Hi, uh, I'm Matt. I'm an appliance educator. And Nick. What's up, everybody? To the show today. And, you know, today's going to be a really fun format where you're really just going to get to meet these guys and know how they came to be the appliance educators and where this whole crazy channel came from. Thanks for joining me, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here as always. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's let's dive right into it. Um, you know, I think we're just going to kind of go into some introductions and backgrounds of how you came to be the channel. Uh, Nick, you want to start us off? Yeah, so, um, you know, I have a background in events and production, so I kind of know my way around some electrical stuff, and, you know, I wanted to learn more, and I got an opportunity here to produce and kind of enhance the production of everything and bring it to another level, so I'm kind of using all my skills at once, and I really enjoy it. Nice. Okay. For me, on any given day, I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, when I wake up and walk around and that's kind of what this uh, appliance educator is about is I've, I've loved being handy and trying to build things and do things but you don't know what you don't know it's kind of a cliche saying but it's very true and so I've always went online to like learn how to do this thing that I wanted to do has somebody else done it before have they filmed it and that's kind of what appliance educator was to me when we started out was kind of like let me show how you know not necessarily easy but it's not as scary or mystifying as you might think it is before you begin a project, like say tiling a bathroom or getting into appliances to repair yourself. There's a lot of things you can do yourself and you might not know what to do with them until you go out in there and do it. And so for me, just having years of trying to learn how things work and kind of putting that into a brand like appliance educator where I can kind of, I guess say share expertise, but it's really, I'm just kind of sharing what I'm learning as I'm doing it while we're filming it. It's like sharing novice advice. Yeah. It's like I'm writing a book and telling you about the book as I write it. And you're like, you're, you can kind of write. And I was like, I guess. But I think that's where we've seen the best appeal from this content mm-hmm. is people like, it. I don't have to be an expert to do a project right. at home. And I think for a lot of people, that's always like the biggest barrier to entry is like, I don't think I can do it. So I'm not going to try. Sure. Exactly. And mm-hmm. that's kind of what this is about is that's why I want like our audience to interject too in our videos. And I, a lot of comments on there kind of blow me up for doing things wrong. I pinned a couple of them because I like that. I like to see that. Like I don't necessarily and know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm kind of showing the way that you can learn how to do something while you do it. If that makes sense. Totally. Well, and and I know you guys. I work with you guys, and so I know how much both of you can do. But did you always see yourself as kind of the do it yourself? I'll dive in and just learn stuff type of guy, or was it something you learned? Not till recently, when you know, you kind of start building confidence, and you ride that wave Mm -hmm. of confidence, and then you're like okay, that that first project wasn't that hard. And then the second one got easier. And it's like, I don't really understand this next project, but I know I can learn and at least get the first few steps going. And then I can carry myself through the rest. And it's kind of repetitive almost in a lot of these DIY projects. Yeah. For me, I got my start. um, Like my dad wasn't the kind of guy who was really handy. He was more of somebody who was like, I'll hire somebody to do it for me. And like just, you know, save up and have a professional do it, which, um, there's pros and cons to that. Like, obviously you have to know the guy if you're doing, if you're price shopping, I always recommend price shopping, um, just cause you can see what the market average is for that kind of job. Um, but I really got my start from learning from my mom cause she would do all of our handiwork. Uh, when I was, when I was working full time and, uh, when I was born, she was at home up until I was about six or seven and then she started working as well, but she was very handy and kind of grew up with that mentality. Um, and so I, I was doing projects when I was 11 and 12 with her in the garage or the bathroom <laughs> just cause it's something to get done. And my dad was very busy, uh, either working overtime or, you know, not being handy. <laughs> <laughs> not to talk bad about him. He's had other things going on. That's true. And, uh, so I was just trying to help out how I can. And I learned that I really enjoyed kind of putting things back together, like taking things apart and putting them back together and kind of learning how things were kind of peeling away the facade as it were to kind of. I was going to ask if you guys were both that kid who was like, ah, you know, it's a Saturday afternoon and I just decided to like take something apart in my room and just kind of fiddle around with it or. 
Mm-hmm. I've always kind of done that. Yeah, I, I was really a big into Legos, so I always wanted to build like Same. realistic things out of Legos. Yeah, so okay. Like, oh, I can build this. Like something you can structure. actually use. Yeah, and like that creative yeah. juice of like, oh, I just built a functional house yeah. for my other toys or something like the that. The most like coveted Lego pieces were those little hinges or the, like the piano hinges, like all the different plates and hinges that you could have to like make movable things and like workable objects. The gears. Exactly. Those are the best Lego things. So you can make yeah, doors and windows. and. So what was the next step then? How did you go from, hey, I've got the little tool belt and I'm full with Legos mm-hmm. or helping mom in the bathroom to like that first project where you're really building that confidence like you yeah. mentioned? I think one of my first ones was... Um, fixing a leak in my shower and so there was this leak that was coming out of the glass in my shower and i was like hmm like i I could probably figure this out it looks like there was a bad caulking job in this corner and maybe i'll just reseal it with some more caulking so that's what i did it worked and i was like oh okay boom done what's next and then um also just uh like working with z-line a lot too um Installing some of their features into the offices and just helping out and around really boosted my confidence with that and just like, oh, wow, this stuff is kind of universal. It's not extra complicated. It's kind of common sense the way things funnel through things like faucets and everything Mm -hmm. like that. And then it was just, oh, okay, yeah, I have confidence in this and now I need to build a prototype uh, for testing or something like that. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Yeah. For for me, it kind of came from a uh, spot of necessity. So when I first moved to my parents' house, had my own place. Um, I had this. Uh, it was my first. Well, it wasn't the first place. This is my uh, the third place I lived. Finally, had washer and dryer in unit. So before my first place had like a shared for the complex. Mm. So I got really used to emptying out everybody else's dryer lint from the dryer before I used <laughs> mine. Uh, and then the second place had no washer dryer, so I had to go to a laundromat. But this place had a washer dryer unit. And after a few months, my, my first winter there, the house itself was built in 1919. It was a beautiful old craftsman home. It was duplex, and so I had the top floor. But the dryer wouldn't dry my clothes. I could do four lo- four cycles in the washing the dryer, excuse me, and it would eventually get my clothes dry. So I contacted the landlord, and um, she would never hire a professional. She would just, like, her and her brother would show up and do the work. She's like in her late 40s, she's in his 50s. And they're like, we're well, just gonna do the work ourselves. And so they showed up to like repair the dryer with the ladder and caulking. Um, and so I was like, what are you gonna do with the ladder and caulking to repair this dryer that's not drying my clothes? Like, we're gonna, the, cause the vent went straight up the back wall, up to the crawl space and then out of the house. So we're gonna go up there and just, we're gonna put caulking around the tubing out there. Cause it's probably getting condensation in there because it's so cold, there's no insulation or it's leaking. And I was like, well, there's no plumbing. It's a dryer. And so they just, we're going to do this. They went up there and we're up there for an hour, come back down with two empty tubes of caulking and um, left. And I was like, sweet. It, I'm pretty confident the dryer's not going to work still. And so I did that and it still didn't work. And I called her again. And it was the same thing. She's like, well, I can put more caulking, but I don't know what that's going to do. <laughs> and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's not how you fix a dryer. So I was like, well, I need to fix this. And that was like, that was a span of like probably two and a half, three weeks that process just trying to get her to come out so i uh just i'm gonna pull this dryer apart and i looked online first thing i found was there's probably either um water in the vent itself or it's clogged with a uh, lint which is also a fire hazard what i found out is because it went straight vertically up to the ceiling and out of the house it was building up condensation as the hot air moved to the attic mm. since the house was built in 1919 it's basically hitting air that's 30 degrees here in nevada and cooling off and then running back down the vent. So when she did the caulking, it did seal it. So now all that water now stayed, stayed inside. inside for sure and went down. So I pulled the dryer out and um, there was also a hole in the grate for the lint, which all the lint went in there. So I basically went through, disassembled the entire dishwasher, taking pictures of the step process along the way. So I'm not gonna buy a new dishwasher, but I'll, or sorry, uh, dryer, but I want one to work so I can have dry clothes. And it pulled out a contractor's bag full of lint from all the vents, from the dryer itself. And I had about a gallon and a half of water that was just resting inside the, the dryer and the venting. Because the venting was snaking around before it went straight up. So there's like probably eight feet of just venting tubes back there around. And common sense kind of tells you like that's a lot of pressure yeah. to shoot up yes. through the rest of the house and out. Yeah. So what yeah. I did is I cut that venting, cleaned it all out. 
and uh, ran the dryer again. And after one cycle, I had dry clothes. And um, so then I was like, I'm gonna have to move out of this place after a year or two because it'll build up lint again. And I'll have to do I'll have to do that every year because she's not gonna do it. Because <laughs> you're the maintenance guy now. Yeah. That you yeah. figured it out. And once. then I went from there, and uh, since the house was built in 19, 1919. In the winters, it was single pane windows, so the air would—you just feel like a breeze coming through the glass because, like, lead-based. Sure. It looked beautiful, but it was not, not good. Efficient. Yeah, so I had to go through on the outside on a grill ladder because it was on the second floor, and I put um, sealant around all the windows and because wood frames, and so I basically sealed the entire floor, and then I had to buy new window coverings. So I had to basically invest in this rental property to live comfortably in the winter and have stuff used. But that kind of sparked something inside me where I loved figuring out how things worked. I didn't spend any money fixing that dryer, just time. But you fixed it too, right? Exactly. For free. Yeah, just fixed it for free. And yeah. then doing that, I was like, if I'm self-reliant and I can fix my own appliances and learn how they work, and it's really kind of pulling them apart. It's like working on a car for yourself. You kind of learn by just throwing yourself in there, getting the anxiety out of the way. The anxiety is kind of there to stop you from breaking anything or biting off more than you can chew. But it's kind of like leaning into it and then learning as you pull stuff apart how it works and how you can fix it. That's almost like a good thing I would want to just ask you a little more about is like that low pressure approach, because I know for you guys, when you're planning out new videos, sometimes it's just based on audience feedback, right? It, you both of you may say, I'd never thought of this before. We've never done it mm -hmm. before, but it seems like people want to see us do this and we're going to figure it out. I mean, no, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> right. Like yeah. what, what do we see common responses and questions for? Yeah. It's like, okay, well, we, I'm sure we can try to figure this out and just do some research and ask some questions yeah. and find a common ground in all those answers mm -hmm. and go for it and see what yeah. happens. So we'll do some research before we do something and then we'll go into it. And uh, there's a lot of different variables that go into it. And so like, every project's different. And so like for trying to show up like a DIY, we'll do research. And then sometimes it ends up being different than what we researched the process itself. And people um, will respond back. Hey, why'd you do it that way? You should right. have gone this way. It's like, cool. Right. We love that. Like, Absolutely. Tell us. And that's we, why that's it's a learning moment for mm -hmm. us, and we'll continue to teach those moments on to the rest. Exactly. That does seem to be one of the biggest things. Is like there's this giant internet community of people who are like giving feedback, their tips, their take on it. Mm -hmm. and here's how I did it. Here's what I did wrong, right. and all kinds of things. And I think that's one of the coolest things in the information age. It's still very tactile things. You're getting your hands dirty, but there's a whole world of people yes. online who have probably made the same mistake you're about to make. And I think this uh, brand is really the perfect avenue or, or channel for people to, to do that for our audience because we do want that feedback. And we do want to see like somebody say, hey, this is here's a better way to do it. But also like looking, like Nick was saying, at the comments and uh, threads and seeing what people do want to see. And like that's why we want people to comment on our videos like, hey, you did this. Can you do something else like this? And we're more than happy to kind of investigate that and see – you know, can we do that? It's, it's really fun to do the research too. It's yeah. like it to learn things that are going to be useful in your life. Mm -hmm. Like I'm buying a home. Yeah. I want to learn everything I can cause I'm not rich. I, I don't want to have to pay mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. pocket to get things repaired or looking better right. or running more efficiently. So this is just a great tool for our generation yeah. to use. I'm on the same page. Cause like when that, with that dryer situation, I was basically living paycheck to paycheck. Um, I had, I think I was just gotten married uh, for the first time and so money was really tight. And so I basically at the end of every month have everything budgeted. So like for the last four to six days of the month, I had zero dollars in my wallet and it's because I pay, pay my bills. I was make sure I have bills and food, you know, and so I can't afford to have somebody come out and look at something like a convenience like that. I have to do it myself. And that's kind of where, you know, living on my own and trying to figure out how can I make something better? How can I better my own living situation? without having to spend money on it. Well, I'll set you guys up for an obvious plug too. I'm at home, I'm the audience, I'm about to start a project. Where should I go to do some research? There's a uh, Lowe's.com, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking you would say the Appliance Educator YouTube channel, oh, but damn, but for you guys, yeah. before you've made the video, like yeah. what's your, go are you just hitting up a question on Reddit? Are you going straight to YouTube? Like yeah. where's, the it depends. I usually I'll start at Google and then kind of filter through that and to see some um just some name brands that i kind of recognize that i know will be reliable resources and then I kind of dive into that and then see where that takes me and then youtube as well um because i'm a visual learner so i like to see how things are done so mm -hmm. that that helps me a lot like I'll, I'll start with reading some things and then i'll go into the videos 
to visualize what I just read. Yeah. Kind of I, for, for me, it's all YouTube. It's always yeah. been like when I was younger, especially I was just hop on YouTube when I was doing working on my own cars and stuff. Um, I would go on YouTube, type in the make model of the car of the year and then the thing I wanted to do on it. And most often there's going to be some uh, guy holding his cell phone over the engine. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> there's a couple guys out there that have car repair channels that are amazing. Um, I can't name them off the top of my head or otherwise give them a shout out, but they have like a tripod and they literally show you step by step exactly what they're doing, how they do it. And there's a couple of them that have had the exact same model truck that I have. So like it, everything's the exact same on it. It's really made it really easy and demystified it. And then instead of paying $500 to a mechanic, I spend $10 on the parts and do it myself. Totally. There's a, so I have a 2008 Volkswagen Touareg and there's this Eastern European guy that i that I have to, that I watch because he's like the only one that works on my year and my model car. And it, it is the cell phone, like here I'm doing this and, or he'll like film mm -hmm. some other guy with his cell phone, like doing this and he's like, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. but it works. And I'm just like, totally. I yeah. get it. Okay. That's all I really needed. I don't like the high yeah. production value is awesome. I would love to see that, but it does not necessarily need it. Yes. I, I found the same thing that it's almost become like when you used to watch your dad, like mm -hmm. be like, Hey, so here's how you're going to, here's how you're going to do your oil change. But now it's like some guy you'll never meet over, over yes. the engine. Cause I've done the same. And there is a YouTube account uh, of a guy that does that for people who don't have dads for sure. It, he's he, done some great stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, which I was like, this is such a great oh, concept. Everything from like hanging floating shelves to like reading a bedtime story. He's yeah. like, I'm, and I mean, that's what's so cool about content. Wholesome. It's just like, there is someone out there who's probably had your problem. Yeah. And you can find it in a world Absolutely. of 7 billion people. I would yes. think so. <laughs> we would hope so. Yeah. Hey guys, Drew from the Appliance Educator Podcast here, and I just wanted to take a minute out to talk about our amazing sponsor, Z-Line Kitchen and Bath. You've heard the guests and the hosts talk about this amazing brand and all the attainable luxury that they create right here in the heart of Lake Tahoe, USA. From freestanding ranges to ventilation, dishwasher and microwave, to everything you'll need to complete your next bathroom project, Z-Line Kitchen and Bath is bringing luxury into your next project. So let me ask you guys this. I've got, I've got some fun questions for you. What's your favorite comment you've gotten back on a piece of appliance educator com content? Uh, for me is probably when I, there's, a, there's, I guess, different categories. One is just saying, I don't like there's music backing the sound. Super annoying. I've had like 10 comments where people are like, the music is super annoying, don't have it. Which is so are you just doubling down on the music? Oh, or? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, turned, I changed it to house music. No. <laughs> they had a point, and the reason being is we were using a shotgun mic that had bad quality, mm -hmm. and this is when it was just basically me doing it all myself. I'm a camera operator sound and then somebody who's nearby. Hey, can you come hold this for me real quick? And so the music was really to hide the fact that we had bad audio because I didn't have a good lav. Okay. So I just like there's like noise levels and stuff. So I just put music you just kind of muddy the mix uh, back track the whole way. Up. Yeah. And I do like the feedback. But my favorite piece of feedback. Sorry to kind of rant there for a second was this guy who it was when I showed how to hardwire an island range hood. Uh, which I was asked to do uh, a lot of requests to see how do you hardwire it and sure. you can cut the cord and hardwire it. and then the guy noticed I had put the uh, wire nuts on the first one was on correctly and the other two I put on when I wired the two wires together I twisted them the same way I was twisting the nut so there's potential for it to unravel the twisting mm -hmm. and um, his YouTube name was shut up and so I just pinned that comment and said thank you shut up <laughs> <laughs> that's on our, our I think page. that's still on the channel today. Yeah. So if you want to yeah. go see a great internet artifact, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I haven't, I'm still pretty fresh with appliance edu educator, so I haven't got a whole lot of feedback on a whole lot of stuff, but I have gotten some great outtakes and kind of the stuff that comes out of my mouth and then that is used in. Uh, so like grunk, grunk. <laughs> yeah, so we're sticking with kind it. of like an inside joke that we're the grunk and grime mm -hmm. brothers. Absolutely, uh, that's because we have bullet points on our scripts. We don't follow full scripts when we're doing things because we we uh, we do the bullet points as like a step by step, and then yes. we're doing the step physically. So we, you're kind of physically doing the steps, and then you're trying to talk on top of that. Kind of talk your way mm -hmm. through it. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes you know you're your words don't come out exactly as you want them to and you make up words yeah. like grunk and grime gr grime. No. grime is a word yeah, yeah, but yeah. grunk is mm -hmm. grunk and is grunk that? is grunk it's yeah. kind of yeah. the unofficial Rob mascot of the, of of the of it's, like, it's like skunky yeah. grime grunk it's like stinky grime yeah crud and yeah, yeah. gunk and gunk Which and there, grime there is yeah. video footage of an earlier because i 
upon Circuit, we started adding more people. So Drew, you have been immense help. With yeah, that. if you look really closely back in Appliance Educator 2, you may actually see me in a video. Yeah. A couple from Actually, that same ago. one that I was talking about with the hard, hard running, the, yeah, yep. you and Mason. Yep. Um, the dishwasher one you actually yeah. helped out immensely on and running the camera and everything. That was a long day too because we really yeah. learned from going in completely blind yes. every step to doing a dishwasher yeah. install. But there is an earlier video where Drew scripted out like four pages for me <laughs> and I'm like reading it and I was like, I'm not going to memorize four pages yeah, of Yeah, I thought I was helping and I definitely yeah. was not. Well, there's, there's a few takes of me trying to do that and then you off camera yelling the blinds at me and I'm just like, I can't fuck, I can't. <laughs> Give me just hitting the paper points. like, yeah. read. <laughs> read what I've read. <laughs> like, just give me the bullet points. I'm doing the work I'll for you. It. All you have to do is read. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, not wrong, though. Oh, oh I did get feedback recently of like, do you guys use a teleprompter? Because you probably should. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't, we've had that before. And I was well, like, I really don't want to. I'd rather be natural. YouTube channel. We're not a yeah. news network. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. I'd rather be more natural, too, because then we can make up grunk. Well, and even from trying to like, I guess, like script something deeper, what we learned was the challenge is like, it's hard to take your eyes off the job. Like when you have the guy filming and he's supposed to be talking and actually doing the install, that guy doesn't have time to also read something. Correct. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so also, that's why like, um, if you go to our blog, there's a whole section on the bathroom remodel. Mm -hmm. And that was what I did myself. I'd initially planned on filming it too, but I'm like, I'm not going to demo a bathroom, set a camera up, set up lighting, mic myself demo this bathroom, try to stay clean for the camera, talk to the camera while I'm doing it. Cause I don't even know what I'm doing. First of all, cause I was, it was actually my parents' bathroom that had mold in it and it started just, I could literally peel the tile away with my fingers. Was that your first like real demo? Like yeah. tearing, tearing a hole, like basically taking the whole surface off the wall down to the baseboard. For the most part, I've helped yeah. people demo tile flooring before, like family members, uh, friends, which is just a hammer and just kind of just basically break it up and then lift it off the concrete backer board. But this is the first time I do it myself tile on a uh, shower and, um, there was mold behind it. And then I realized as I'm pulling this off, the housing development basically just uh, tiled onto drywall in the shower. It wasn't even up to code. Oh, there's like nothing in between there from the moisture. Yeah. So this house is built, this is a track home that I grew up in, but the house itself was built in 1984. This is like on the edge of what was then Sparks and like Reno and Reno was like probably 50,000 people or something like that. Not that little, but it was pretty small back yeah, then. Yeah. And um, I basically in one night, I wasn't even there to demo the bathroom either. I was just there to have dinner with my parents. And I was just like up there. I was going to check my old bathroom. This is the bathroom I grew up in. And uh, just started tearing it apart. And my dad, he's like, what's going on up there? And I was like, oh. I just opened the door and he could just see like half the tile gone off the shower. I was like, I decided to, I'm going to make you guys a new shower. And so. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've ripped half this tile down. <laughs> yeah. yeah cause this kid, I just wanted to get all that mold out of there. Because it's in my parents' house. And I got, they're like living around that. And I was like, I'm going to get this. And then this Reno is very hard to get mold. Yeah, we're very it's, dry. Yeah, yes. it's incredibly dry. Humidity of a 1%, 2% probably. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, so did that that night. One night, just got everything demoed. And then spent a year and a half um, slowly just doing piece by piece, which like... Yeah, because the demo's one, but doing the whole bathroom's yeah. a dozen projects. I'd right? never tiled before. And then learning how to, how to basically put the... Um, mud. Yeah, mud the wall so it would stick to the... So the tiles would stick to it. And I watched this video on YouTube of this guy, and he says, you're ready to mud when you can, like, smear the mud on and then let go and have your trowel stick to the wall like glue. That's, like, thick enough. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's not too thick, not too thin. Gotcha. So it's, like, sticky enough that, like, your trowel will just stay on the wall. And so I let go, and it stayed there for, like, a full minute, and it wasn't moving at all. And I was like, sweet, I'm going to start tiling now. And I sat there for five full minutes before I put the first tile on, because I'm like, here I go. Just like just <laughs> super weird. Like I just picture myself laying this vertical tile and then having them all just fall off on me or in the middle of the night. But they didn't. It worked. I followed the guy's directions, um, which are on the blog, and you kind of see everything there. So I didn't film any of that. I just took pictures of it because I was like, I'm going to try to do this. And then I'll do another one and film it maybe. But after I'm done with this one, I'm probably going to hire somebody to do my bathroom renovation for me again. That I was say, your big takeaway <laughs> from that. <laughs> yeah, I say that. Well, cost-wise... I'm only paying for cost of materials. And so I think it was like less, it was like $1,100 and I have a, you know, 1920s style subway tile uh, shower that goes floor to ceiling. The flooring in there looks really good. It's like that gray flooring. And you I, did a new sink vanity? New sink vanity. Well. Yeah, yeah. So I got a vessel sink from, I think, Lowe's and it was like $65 or something like that. Um, and so I basically just tried to piece everything together to make it the lowest cost it could be. Because a bathroom renovation of that magnitude is probably 10 grand. I'm it guessing. can be for sure. It can be, yeah. Because yeah. it's, I mean, not the to, labor is what gets you. That's exactly yeah. right, yeah. 
And then I've learned a lot tiling too. Like tiling around a window is a whole other challenge because you have to have the tile on left and right hand side level. But then if you just, what I did in the showers, I just leveled up the window itself. So I put a support frame, leveled that, and then just tiled over it. But then the left side was a little bit shorter than the right side because the level, um, because at that point of the tile, it was like matching the way the tile sat. So it wasn't exactly level when it got to the very top. Uh So there was a, it was like a degree off. So as I got to the left side of the window, the tile got separated more and more. So now there's a um, nice little mosaic in the top left corner of that shower. (laughs) (laughs) Because I'm not going to pull all this tile back down and redo it. Well, now you can see, guys. That's what but, DIY is all about, right? Yeah. You have just, to, if you do a DIY, you're going to have your own thumbprint on there for sure. Yeah, the maker's mark, right? As, as exactly. Yeah. I call it character. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom is so sweet. She's like, it's, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's flawless. And I was like, Mom, there's like an uh, inch gap over here and a quarter inch over there. It's Well, and that's probably one of the biggest things about doing these projects, right? Is like you take home all the flaws. Where exactly. other people are like, it looks fantastic, but you're like, I know all seven places I, know I screwed up. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and like I, I, was like, I could do it again for myself. I'd be happy to. I would, if somebody was like, oh, I'll pay you to do that. I've had neighbors do that for me. And I was like, I don't want to do that to you. <laughs> like, they take your money and then, like, leave with, like, this isn't a professional. <laughs> Get sued on yeah. Judge Judy or something so, about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that, that that's the fun of it, though, right? Yeah. It's like you did it. You made this beautiful bathroom, mm-hmm. saved a bunch of money, and you learned how to do it, right? Yeah. And you I learned, learned that you don't want to ever do it again. Exactly. Which some might say is the most important. I lesson. probably will, though. <laughs> It's just, it's just tiling. I have an immense amount of respect for laborers of all, but like people who do tiling too. Cause it's just so, that was just subway it's tile. so tedious. It's so tedious. But then you have people who do like those different patterns and mm-hmm. like you integrate mosaics into patterns and it just gets, when I see tile now, I'm like looking at professionally done tile. I love seeing mistakes. Cause I'm like, yeah, you've made a mistake too, buddy. You probably do this for a living. <laughs> 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 but it's like a minimal, like little, like tiniest thing. Oh. But, no, that's that's an awesome. I mean, that's an awesome story here because as as you said, you kind of just went in with a little bit, bit off more than you can chew, but you got it done, and that was amazing. Yeah. You stuck with it and saw it through. So yeah, and it's it feels so good. Like even though it took me a year and a half from start to completion, because I wasn't out doing it all the time. I have other stuff going on, but like there's those you know stories about people who like start a project and then they have an unfinished room in their house for ten years or something like that. It's never too late to go back and fix it, even if, like, especially if it's giving you dread every time you see that project. Like to the home DIYer, if you see a project that's sitting around undone, just put time aside, but day by day, I'm going to do this part, this part, this Chip part. Chip away at it. And eventually you'll get it done, and you'll feel so good when it is done and less stressed. That's how I felt about that bathroom. I just wanted to get it done like finally. Like most things in life, right? Exactly, you, yeah. You don't have to do it all today, but if you yeah. do something, yeah, it gets you on a roll. Yeah. For sure, yeah. Mm, yeah. Just ride that wave. Every step gets you there, and... uh yeah, just ride that wave. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks for sharing the stories today and giving just the audience a chance to kind of meet you a little bit outside of the, yeah. the usual YouTube and blog content. Um, you know, you uh, check out the Appliance Educator YouTube channel and the Appliance Educator website to just see more from uh, Nick and Matt, Grunk and Grime themselves <laughs> do, doing their thing. And uh, yeah, they a whole bunch of great new projects coming. Anything you guys are excited for coming to the channel that you want to kind of plug on the way out? Um. I have a big Pyrex video in the works. Cool. So we're cool. going to debunk some myths about Pyrex. Nice. Cool. Cool. I'm just overall excited about people who've joined the team. Uh, it's like Drew, obviously you've been shaped the brand immensely. Uh, Nick here producing with a bunch of hair, like just behind the scenes, Nick does so much and in front of the camera too. And it's been just immense to have people help push the brand forward too. Well, this has been kind of a DIY for us. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it, it started small. I remember when we first talked about it, it was kind of like really at the, hey, we've done a couple of videos. It's kind of an idea thing. And just yeah. to see it grow and then see how much it's grown with, with Nick joining us, it's really awesome. Yeah. I really do want this to be like a special thing that people can learn something from. Even if like one person finds our account and has that one video that they didn't know existed that helps them get through a project, that's huge to me. Yeah, I think about the one time I needed to know something about replacing a Subaru's battery that came with a key fob when you no longer have the fob and how you have to go in and manually reset the car's alarm after you swap the battery in that case. And had a gentleman not created a video that told me that, I probably would have just let my lights flash in my that garage for the, the <laughs> flashing yeah. lights. Yeah, Absolutely. so that's what it's all about. Relatable. A hundred percent. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely do this again, and we'll bring some... Yeah. Uh, some horror stories back with us yeah everybody listening oh, out there too please uh, go to our youtube channel like leave a comment if right now if you're thinking of like hey do this video 
just go to whatever random random videos and leave a comment saying let's do this or yeah questions feedbacks mm-hmm. ideas for videos or blogs or even podcasts you'd like to see in the future we'd yeah. love all of it yeah, any you, criticism uh keep it to yourself <laughs> okay yeah because <laughs> no, i'm, I'm not on the channel much bring the criticism i would just want to <laughs> see what you have to say personally yeah. Yeah. Finish with, a, with a comment please for me. so please. there was one person left a comment on the video um and they had said, it was a video, it was actually, I think it was that Range Hood Hard Running video again. Another comment, this person said, uh, this channel is so great. The flow, your speech, the way you speak when you do this video. <laughs> like, please, the branding, please keep it up. It was, that's going to paraphrase. And then Drew came to me and he's like, did you write this comment? <laughs> yeah, if it, you guys may not know it from the yeah. content, but the amount of takes we have. Matt, Matt is not the most eloquent guy uh, Neither, I'm but. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys do a great job when it's showtime, I will say. When the camera's on, I have to enunciate. Right now, I'm also trying to enunciate. But normally, I mumble, and I kind of like mix my words together. On the way out, can you give him a taste of like real Matt talk? When he's... Yeah, when I get really excited, I like stutter, too. It's like I'll speak really fast, and I'll start stuttering. I'm so aware of it right now. It's not happening. But you've seen it. We're all like, no, I'm just st- laughing because I know the amount of editing and retakes that, yeah. and, and just the work that's gone into it. But Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dre, Dre would know. He's behind the camera right now. He's helped edit almost. He's doing all the videos now, editing them. He knows all the. Uh, he'll he'll grab some and then send them to me. Look how dumb you look. <laughs> <laughs> he has a whole folder of screenshots yeah. of our faces. He does when we look like idiots. Yeah, yes. which I love to see. We'd love to see too from the audience. If you guys want to see some of that, some of the behind the scenes uh, appliance fails. Uh, yes, we we'd love to share that with you guys. So let us know. We definitely have probably several blooper reels that we could probably put together. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, guys. This was great. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, we'll do it again. This has been the Appliance Educator Podcast, brought to you by Z-Line Kitchen and Bath. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow at Appliance Educator for more tips and tricks and advice to keep your home running at optimal performance. If you have any ideas or topics you'd like to hear on future episodes of the show, leave us a comment. Appliance Educator, signing off. 